Now we speak of God. He said, with God all things are possible. Now we identify God with man. All things are possible to him who believes. I now tell you that God is man and exists in us and we in him. The eternal body of man is the human imagination. That is God himself. Do I not say that you're going to accept it? I am bringing you to the true God. Now, keep on examining yourselves to see whether you're holding to the faith. You say, you choose the Lord. I'm telling you who the Lord is. The Lord is your own wonderful human imagination. That is God. With God, all things are possible. Would you not agree with me that there isn't one thing made in this world that was not first imagined? The clothes you're wearing had to be imagined before it became the thing you call now a dress or a suit. The chair on which you are seated, the house, everything was once only imagined. Now we call it a reality, but it began as an imaginal act. Now you don't have to accept it. The majority refuse to accept it. They think of something outside of themselves. And to that being, they turn and they worship that being. Some little thing on the wall, a picture. Maybe some little statue. They do all kinds of things to something outside of self. The majority will simply turn their backs upon me and ignore it. And go their way, thinking now, they must have an external God to whom they pray. Well, if you, you must have it, have it. I am telling you, if at any time you hear the word and it conveys the sense of something external to your own being, you have the wrong law. Tonight, I hope I can bring you to the true Lord, and that Lord is your own wonderful human imagination. Man is all imagination and God is man and exists in us and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination and that is God himself. The divine body, that is the divine law. He rises with him and the whole being begins to awaken and may I tell you it's an awakening process. When he actually awakens within you, you awaken. It's not another. You are actually awakening from a profound sleep. You have no idea how sound the sleep is. It is out of the grave that man truly rises. And the grave is his own wonderful skull. That's where God is buried. So here I bring you tonight and introduce you to yourself. I bring before my mind's eye a scene which would imply that I am the one that I want to be, or that my friend or others are as I would like them to be. I try to confine it within the framework of the golden rule that is doing unto others what I would love them to do unto me, and not to go outside of that room. It's such an easy thing to practice. Would I like the good that I ask of them? Yes. Like it for myself, or I would ask it for them. Bring them before your mind's eye, and dare to assume that what you are seeing in your mind's eye is true. Now there is a definite technique to it, a simple, simple technique. If I can share with you what I do, and it works, I bring them into my mind's eye and I work myself up into an emotional state. 
is like a peculiar rhythm. I breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out and suddenly I reach a certain point and then one deep inhalation as though I'm setting it up in a time exposure before my own mind. I set it up and all of a sudden I have a deep, deep inhalation and every pore of my being explodes and then I do nothing beyond that. It's taking that scene and setting it up in a time explosion before the eternal event. And then I explode it and then let light develop and light develops. And then I get the call or I get the wire or I get a letter confirming that which I did. And I do nothing to make it so. I simply believe implicitly my own wonderful human imagination. I believe that all things are possible to him. He has ways and means that the mortal mind knows not of. So I do not care. If I do not see clearly how it could possibly be, it makes no difference to me. I simply bring it to my mind's eye what I want to see, see it clearly, explode it, and then let it be. Now it could be tomorrow. It could be a month. It could be even years. I am not concerned. I have done it, that's all that matters as far as I am concerned. Everything has its own appointed hour. See the vision? That was my vision. The vision has its own appointed hour. It ripens, it will flower. If it be long, wait. It is sure, and it will not be late. A little chicken, 21 days. A man, 9 months. A horse, 12 months. A little lamb, five months, and there is a time interval between that impregnation and the actual embodiment of that state. I do not know the time intervals. I only know that all I do, I do it. And if that time interval is a day, well, it's a day. If it's going to be a month, let it be a month. I do not know the time interval between my vision of you be the one that you want to be and you becoming there, which I have assumed that you are. I do not know the time interval, but there are time intervals between the impregnation and the birth of that impregnation. But I tell you, it works. When I say I am, I can't say I am and point elsewhere. That is the core of my being, and that is the name of God forever and forever and forever. So I cannot say I am and in any way have the feeling of nearness. For nearness implies separation and he isn't near me. He is my very being. But I hope you know the being that I talk about. And that being is your own wonderful human imagination. So here I bring you tonight and introduce you to yourself.